Jackson takes the snap, looks, lets it fly down the field. Jones is out there, reaches up. He cannot make the catch, or does he? No. Ball hits the ground. He reaches up between two defenders with one hand, but he can't make the catch. The ball hits the ground. The Seahawks defense has held. And we're now joined by former Seahawks linebacker Dave Wyman. Dave, the Seahawks got the better of the Falcons at CenturyLink Field during the regular season last year, only to lose to Atlanta in the playoffs. The Falcons have struggled early on this season. What's going on with them? Well, I think what's going on with them is what happened to the Seahawks after they lost to New England in the Super Bowl. They had that Super Bowl hangover. They had a stretch where they went 0-3. There was a three-game span where Matt Ryan, their franchise quarterback, threw six interceptions. So they're trying to get it right, and Seahawks fans know what that's about. Remember the Seahawks, after that loss to New England in the Super Bowl, went 2-4 and four to start out the season. But they made it back to the playoffs, and, and I'm afraid to say Atlanta, I think, had a get right game against the Dallas Cowboys, holding them to seven points. Um, they had eight sacks, and then Matt Ryan is finding all of his targets, Mohamed Sanu, Taylor Gabriel, Tevin Coleman, and of course the great Julio Jones. So unfortunately, I think the uh, Atlanta Falcons are back on track. Well, and the Seahawks are going to have to face those tough Falcons receivers without Richard Sherman for the rest of the season, including this week. How tough is that for the Hawks? Well, you can't replace Richard Sherman. He is irreplaceable, just like Earl Thomas, just like Cam Chancellor. But they did go and draft Shaq Griffin. And you could say maybe Shaq Griffin's having a better rookie year than Richard Sherman had his rookie year. And he went and got Justin Coleman in a trade. They got lots of depth. And I would say also this, watch out for Nico Thorpe, who's done a great job on special teams. And of course, they got Jeremy Lane back in that trade for Dwayne Brown. So they do have better depth this year to take care of those kinds of injuries. And uh, I think these guys will step right in. And again, it's not going to be the same without Sherm, but I think they're a lot better off than they were last year. And we can't forget about Byron Maxwell rejoining the Legion of Boom. We'll talk right. about him just in a little bit. But the Seahawks have really depended on the pass first offense because the running game hasn't gotten going. Can they be pass first the rest of the way to find success? Apparently they can. They're the number two passing offense in the NFL. And I would have never thought that five years ago when Russell came in. So uh, look, that's one of the things about Pete Carroll and Daryl Bevel. They're really good at coaching to players' strength. And the strength of the team right now is the MVP candidate, Russell Wilson. He's handling it now. Personally, I would love to see a running game get going, but it's just not to be right now. It's a decent running game, but right now their strength is Russell Wilson and all of his targets like Jimmy Graham and Doug Baldwin and Paul Richardson. And Tyler Lockett. In fact, and we Lock had Lockett mic'd up against Arizona. You gonna be following me around? I'm following you around, my friend. All right, I gotta remind everybody I'm mic'd up. <laughs> so they don't say nothing that they gonna risk they, they can take back. Shout out to my mama, my daddy, my whole family. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Booger T, Carver, we on the map. Hey, I'm mic'd up. So if you want to give a shout out to anybody. Let's work for one another and let's make plays. And I don't know who, but somebody, tonight, somebody got to get that somebody. work. Same game we've been playing our whole life. Regardless if it's on a Thursday or Sunday or Monday. It don't matter. Every day is a Super Bowl game for us. And that's how you got to look at it. Otherwise, you're going to take a team lightly. Oh, boy. He got a clean cut today. Ooh. Somebody about to get it. Fitzgerald wide side. Peterson gets the handoff. The ball comes out. It's on the ground. The Seahawks have it. Ball! Fake, keep, half roll right. Russell looks, gonna throw deep, pass lock it in the end. He's incomplete. Oh my gosh. Had him. Good job, man. I thought he was early. Cool. Yeah, 27, I thought he was early. He made a nice play to catch up to it. To get the ball out there earlier, we gotta walk in because you're like 10 yards behind him. Good job, man. Line drive, kick, bounces at the 11, scooped up by Lockett at the 6. Takes it out across the 15 to 20, turns up field far sideline. Oh. Empty backfield, five man rush, Russell gets rid of the football, reaching out, making the catch, touchdown, Seahawks! Get out, baby! Hey, get out, baby! Good job, baby! 
Russell. At their own two yard line, all the way at the far end of the field, Peterson takes the handoff. He gets hit in the end zone. He's going to go down. The second safety in as many weeks for the Seahawks defense. Great penetration. Let's go. The turn, hand to roll. First down and more. 45 40. Dragged down at the 35 yard line. Richardson slots on the right side. The throw to the pier side. Tyler Lockett is there to make that catch. Let's go, D. Stanton takes a shotgun snap. Looking left, throws down the sideline. Got a man out there, it's knocked away. And on coverage with Shaq Griffin. That's my boy. Good job, Shaq. Good job, Shaq. All right, let's go, punt return. We need something. We gotta get, a deep, we gotta get an offense something. Tyler Lockett and the Seahawks saved their best for the second half in Arizona. Part two of Mike Up is next.